I'm going to share with you the three keys you need to unlock everything in cloud networking. And to do that, you just need to think about where you live. Now, unless you're doing the whole van life thing, you live in some kind of neighborhood. And that's a defined area where the, all the homes are located. It has boundaries, streets, and addresses. And then somewhere close by, there's some kind of shops and all the other neighborhoods, and eventually the rest of the world. So let's start by thinking about a software defined network. In Azure, your neighborhood is called a virtual network or VNet for short. And just like how your neighborhood is separate from all of the others, your VNet starts off isolated from all other VNets in the cloud. Now, every building in your neighborhood has an address, and that's not random either. The zoning people got together somewhere and chose all of the addresses for your neighborhood as part of their plan to build out your whole area. And your VNet's neighborhood also has an address space. And that's where you decide how many IP addresses you want in your neighborhood. And of course, there can be many streets in a single neighborhood, and that's where you can divide your VNet into multiple sub-networks or subnets. That way, you can put the right resources in those subnets based on their functions. And when you want to leave your house, you go into the streets, get into your car, probably enter a destination to your GPS, and then you follow the directions to get where you want to go. And your VNet uses DHCP to give all of your resources an IP address, DNS servers, a gateway, and routing tables. And that way you can communicate with all other resources in your network. But here's something really important that you need to know. Today, inside your VNets, communication is open which means every VM and resource can talk to every other VM, even across subnets. And it's from your subnets that you get access out to the internet. But in the future, all of these subnets are going to become a private little streets in your own neighborhood and internet access is going to be removed by default, making all subnets private. And you can test how this is going to impact your stuff right now by opening your subnets and then checking this box. And if you run into anything that doesn't work, please comment below on this video so I can have all my teams start to look into that. So we've talked about your neighborhood, but what about all the other neighborhoods out there? Well, there's four reasons why you'd want to leave your own neighborhood. Hanging out with friends, going shopping, going to work, or taking a holiday. Now your friends' neighborhoods could just be a block away or way off in the country and you can build additional address spaces in your own virtual network, just like we did before, or you can build totally new virtual networks. And if you go with the multiple VNet route, you also need to build all the roads to connect the neighborhoods together. In Azure, we call that VNet peering. And to do this, you just need to make sure that the VNet address spaces do not overlap and that you have the network contributor permissions then you can go to peerings over on the left, click add, give it a name, select the other VNet that you want to peer with, then scroll down. Then you check these boxes to control how traffic will flow. Now you can check the first box here and allow traffic to flow from the other VNet into yours, or the second box will let your VNet talk to the other, and you can even check both and two-way communication is just fine. Then we have your gateway traffic. You can allow the other VNet to use your gateway, or you can use the gateway in the other VNet. And since we're talking about gateway traffic, which is the zero route or also called the default route, you need to choose one or the other or neither. Then you scroll down and set the name for the other side of the peer, and then check the boxes if you need to and click add. And in just a minute, you can go see your friends in the other neighborhoods. Now, what about shopping? Maybe for some new Azure Academy merch. But this is where you want to communicate with the Azure platform services like Azure Virtual Desktop, Storage, Key Vaults, Databases, Machine Learning, and more. To get there securely, we need three different kinds of roads. Now, private endpoints are kind of like shopping online. They take you directly to the store without you ever leaving your neighborhood. This is done by creating a 
private IP address inside your subnets that represents the service that you want to talk to, like Azure Storage. This way you avoid the busy and less secure public roads of the internet and ensure that you have a safe shopping trip that's private. The second way is to use the secure main roads. Service endpoints are well-guarded and monitored connections from your VNet to the Azure Services public endpoints. It's kind of like having a dedicated lane on the highway just for your neighborhood to get to the store. Your traffic will leave your VNet, go on the Azure Backbone network on its way out to the internet, and then right before it leaves Azure, the traffic will hairpin to the internet facing endpoint of the Azure service you wanna to talk to. And the last way is specialized shopping shuttles. This is where the store sends out a special van to pick you up and bring you right to the store. This is called subnet delegation. It allows the subnets in your virtual networks to be dedicated for a specific Azure service, ensuring that it's optimized and secure in its access. So which one of these is right for you? Well. That's actually a huge question, but generally it depends on how much network isolation you need for this traffic and how much control you need to have. Now, as much as many people wish they didn't have to, we all need to go to work. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> and for those of us who don't work from home, that means commuting. And nobody wants to be this guy stuck in bumper to bumper traffic for hours. And in Azure, when you need to connect down to your office or even to another cloud, we call this hybrid networking. And you've got a couple different methods here. To get to your office, you could use your own car or the company shuttle or get in the executive fast lane or even use the global transit network. And this is going to require a special subnet called the gateway subnet. In there, you build a resource called the virtual network gateway and then you can configure your client or site to site VPN, your express route, or your virtual WAN. And then of course, sometimes you really just need to get away. And this is the last reason that you'd ever leave your own neighborhood. And that's when you want to access the internet. It's like leaving your home and going on vacation. Now today your subnets use something called the default outbound access. It's kind of like having a passport that allows you to travel to anywhere else in the world whenever you want. But as of September 2025, DOA will be removed from all new subnets. Now that's great for security, but what if you still need to get to the internet? Well, then you need a good travel agent like the NAT Gateway. While you're building out your gateway, you can just check one of the subnet boxes here that you want to use, or from inside your subnet, just pick your gateway from the dropdown. Now, if you need some security while you're traveling, you could go with the Azure Firewall, which also needs its own special subnet right here. And you'll also need to create and attach a route table to your subnet. And that'll redirect your traffic from its normal outbound path to the internet over to your firewall for inspection before it goes to the internet, if you allow it. And whenever you're going anywhere, GPS will help you to navigate your destination like back to home or your office or even any of the stores and converting easily understandable addresses into precise GPS coordinates is exactly what DNS does for you. It translates your domain names and host names into IP addresses that computers understand so that they can locate each other on the network. And that includes the internet. Now, Azure DNS also comes in multiple forms. Your VNet's default DNS uses the IP address 168.63.129.16. But if you use a hybrid network, then you may need to add an Azure DNS zone. And those come in two flavors, public and private. Public is more for DNS public registration, like when you want to register your website on GoDaddy. Private zones are software-based DNS records that you can attach to your virtual network and it does all the DNS lookups for you. However, if you have a more traditional active directory or on-prem resources that you need to use, you'll want to change this here to the custom DNS. Just enter the IP address of your DNS servers. And of course you need some kind of hybrid connectivity to get there. And now your VMs will be able to find your domain controller or anything else you have on-prem and you can just manage DNS like you always have. 
And now that we've covered all the basics of your Azure VNet and subnets, let's look inside your OS for a second. Now I got this question from Gabriel Sly1481, who says, I want to know why my Azure VM randomly loses its network configs. Well, if you open the network configuration on any of your VMs, they should be DHCP by default. This allows the VM to be managed from the Azure cloud layer. And that gives you more flexibility to manage the VM as well as use other tools like the load balancers and app gateways. But there's actually another reason. VMs are actually made up of three different kinds of resources. The VM config itself, which is the VM size. Then you have your disk, and then you have a network card. Now this virtual NIC represents the physical NICs that it's attached to on the host server sitting inside the Azure data center. So if you set a static IP address inside the OS of the VM, and then your VM gets physically moved onto a different host, your OS will still think that it has the static IP of the physical NIC that it was using, but that's been replaced by a brand new NIC. So using DHCP ensures that this won't happen. But what if you actually need a static IP for a domain controller or something else like that? Well, Azure uses DHCP reservations. In your VM, go to the network settings, and then you wanna click up here on your NICS config, and then click the config link at the bottom. For your allocation, just change it to static, and that'll show you the current IP of the VM, and you can also change it to any other available IP in your subnet, because the VM must always have an IP from its own street on the neighborhood. Now, you'll probably wanna click over here and check out this deep dive into cloud networking. Happy learning.